Human trafficking experts are constantly battling both that exploitation and are also fighting the sensationalized version of what people think human trafficking is today. These advocates are convinced that if more people learn the real story, then they'd be able to rescue more survivors. They told our Anusha Roy one way they measure how their efforts are working is how many hotline calls turn into criminal prosecutions. A tip came in on September 27, 2020 from the human trafficking hotline, a family member desperate to find her sister. Investigators started looking, carrying out surveillance, and eventually had a chance to talk to the survivor. She says the suspect was her drug dealer when they lived in another state. She told investigators she was tricked into coming to Denver and promised to be taken care of. But then after arriving in Colorado, he took her cell phone and ID. Court documents say he advertised her online, driving her hotel to hotel around the metro area. She told investigators she worked every single day but didn't get the money promised. Instead, the arrest warrant said some of that money was used to fuel her addiction while the suspect threatened her. We filed uh, three counts, a third degree felony, human trafficking for sexual servitude, servitude a third degree felony for pimping, and a class five felony for pandering. Denver's DA Beth McCann said those kinds of charges can carry as much as 40 years in prison. His trial is set for July. We wouldn't have known about this woman and her situation or about this man and the kind of things that he was doing. So it is a very um, important hotline. Since January of 2021, the Denver DA's office received 42 tips. Five resulted in investigations. One resulted in criminal charges, the case we just discussed. Statewide from 2019 to 2021, 338 cases were investigated. 71 filed for prosecution. Seven turned into convictions for human trafficking. 38 turned into convictions for another crime. 14 were dismissed and 12 are still pending. At the same time, calls and tips jumped from 697 in 2020 to more than 1,000 in 2022. It's discouraging that we weren't able to file more cases. Sometimes a complaint isn't really human trafficking. There also has to be enough evidence. And then there's the delicate matter of witness and survivor testimony. But even if a case isn't filed, we're able to work with the victim, help them get services. Even if it's a gut feeling, call the information into the hotline, let the experts figure out if it's human trafficking or not. Experts like Caitlin Prishlak, a manager at the hotline. Something concerning at a grocery store. Or and knows the hotline campaign is making some kind of impact because more survivors uh, have been reaching people out. People have called us from their home. People have called us from somewhere um, on the street. They've called us from their doctor's office. And sometimes they only have 10 minutes to connect with the survivor and get them the help that they need. So to be very clear here, the tips, all of them are looked at that you call or you text and they're passed along to investigators to figure out if this case can move forward. But the experts we talked to said that quality of information they've been getting is actually improving. They, they ask for things like specifics of cars, information about what made them think that something wrong was happening or suspicious. Kyle, I do want to mention that the survivor in that case we talked to is still receiving resources after connecting with investigators in the DA's office, and we're told that she's doing well. Oh, that, that's good to hear. Yeah. I, I mean, awareness is a nebulous concept. Everybody talks about awareness, but I feel like we're talking about this issue and in detail in a way that we were not always. Yeah, I mean, I mean there's billboards everywhere. You're seeing signs about the hotline in, in stores and, you know, all over the city and across the state. And some of this is individual people who are involved in this sphere, really trying to get people to be more aware. But then Colorado has also over the years changed their law. So before it was very vague, so it was hard to prosecute. And then under tw in 2014, they actually changed the wording to better define what human trafficking is. But then you started seeing the education component of it, right? Telling people what it is, not only for community members to call in, but also survivors sometimes are seeing this information and going, oh my gosh, that happened to me in the past. Let me call in, try to get help, let people know what happened. If there's one thing that I know about folks who watch this program is that they want to be better informed mm -hmm. about complex issues. So thank you for all your work on this. Yeah.